Hey guys, Happy Splasher here. Good morning. So right now we're going to continue with our pit run this week. So yeah, so let's go check it out. So currently we're on this boss here, Unpleasant Surprise. Let's take a look at its skills. Okay, and it looks like they did change a little bit of the graphics over here. But yeah, let's keep going. So whenever an ally present appears, it will give give eyes, gives it a magical ability. Okay. Every third turn, we'll summon two explosive presents to random enemy cells, okay? And then on the seventh turn, the presents will open. Okay, it looks like a couple of things. A, first of all, they are going to have some presents, and these presents, we don't know what they do, but they will get some kind of magic ability, which we'll need to take a look at. Every third turn, we'll see two explosive presents come to our cells, so we'll need to make sure that we can take care of those on the third turn or somewhere around that. And then on the seventh turn, we're going to see presents open. Again, we'll find out what those do, and yeah, we'll take it from there. So yeah, so let's hop right in. Currently using our Gleedy and our Pirate. Okay, so as you can see, it does look a little different now. It, uh, well, a couple things. I guess this is where the refreshes are. This is no number of heroes that we have left. This is our skill over here. Uh, let's take a look at the buildings first. Okay, and then we also do have this hero here. Let's go with our damage pentagram, so that's good. It also tells us when we can use our next powers again, which is really nice. We have double coverage on lanes A and C, so that's good. We'll summon a hero that can actually stick around. Let's go with our, ooh, and it just tells you all the skills right there. Okay, so yeah, let's actually summon this Eternal Sun over here on, uh, let's go here on, yeah, let's go over here on C3. This Eternal Sun will give us some Metal Shield, and then we'll also, we'll leave these melee spots open, but for now it will get a little bit of protection for our heroes, we can also just see them there. Okay, yeah, this is going to take a little bit of getting used to. Alright, so we have these presents now, so this one here deals damage to all of our heroes at the end. We'll, we'll, we will want to destroy that, so let's deal some damage to it. Okay, I can see some damage over to our heroes. We have another present over here that will summon Evil's Helper. We want to get rid of that, so let's do our summons now. Those are sharks. Okay, let's go with... We have combat over here. Destroy that. Damage over there. Let's spread out our damage. We're going to go with this range hero over here on A1. Flammy Heli will get some crystals that will give us some metal shield. Okay, here are the explosive presents. So when they die, they will deal damage to allies around themselves. And then another present here with another skill. Okay, this will be destroyed. Let's keep going. Let's summon another range hero over here on B... Let's say summon over here on uh, C, C1. Just to spread out our damage. Our Eternal Sun is getting an attack boost every time one of our melee heroes attack. So that's why we are seeing such a strong hero. Okay, another present again. This one will summon an Elwyn Fierce, which I'm not sure what it does, but that's okay. We'll summon another range hero. And at this point now, we are full with all of our spots because of the shards and then also the presents. Okay, another present here and deals damage again to all of our heroes. Because all of our spots are filled, that's why we are attacking automatically. Okay, at this point now, we should have lethal. Seeing what the other present does. And yeah, we'll just, uh, let's see where it goes. Here, we can skip the turn so that we can keep attacking. And there we go. So that was the unpleasant surprise. We didn't actually stick around to the other seventh turn because we got the attack boost with the Eternal Sun. Okay, so we're on this next boss here, Ravana the Devious Knight. Let's take a look at their skills. Okay, so whenever an enemy dies, we'll summon a death rune to a random enemy cell. Okay, every third turn, we'll give an attack boost to allies for every rune and pentagram. Okay, and then on the fifth turn, we'll deal damage to the enemy warlord for every rune and pentagram. Okay, so a couple things. Looks like we're going to see a death rune show up whenever one of our heroes dies because we are the enemy. So we want to make sure that we can actually clear out those death runes or have immunity to get around the death rune damage. Every third turn, we're going to see an attack boost happen to the allies, allies being them, for every rune and pentagram. So we want to make sure that we can clear out the runes and pentagrams. And then on the fifth turn, we're going to see damage to our warlord for every rune and pentagram. Okay, so that means that we want to clear out as many runes and pentagrams as possible. And so because of all three of these skills kind of taking advantage of the damage with pentagrams, I'm going to switch our warlord, actually. So let me head out and change this over to our... I usually end up using the Geisha or the Orion here. 
Okay, a couple more visual changes, as you can see there. Okay, we'll close that out. We'll head back to the boss. And, whoops, wrong, <laughs> way wrong place, way wrong place. Okay, so yeah, so let's hop right in. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the buildings first. Okay, and we already see that there is a death rune, which is an instant kill. We have a pentagram over here, and then also a rune over there. Let's start with our... Thinking what's going to make sense. No, actually, uh, let's start with our Count Vlad summon. And then we'll also go with this range here over here on B1. This Merton Care will summon a rabbit, which will allow us to get some more summons on the board, but then also be able to potentially get rid of these runes as well. Okay, we have this All Prince of Sands that gives us miss. We have this here that can deal damage to a random order hero, which is really nice. Although I do want to still be able to attack. Yeah, this will be fine. Let's pull out some heroes there. Yeah. When the all dies, it gives us a negative attack over to our heroes, so that's why that is now gone. We have this Aphrodite over here that has some pentagrams. That's not good. We can go for a shuffle in order to clear this out, or we can go for a board wipe. I will end up using our first shuffle over here. And nothing. We will do another shuffle. Okay, at this point, we actually do have something to clear this out. So let's go with this Dominus here on D2. Okay, we have this Baltz over here that is actually silenced because of the Murden Care and the Rabbit. Have another Baltz over here. We could clear this out. Let's go with... Hmm, actually, you know what? Let's go with this range hero over here. This is Athena on B2. We'll be able to get some extra summons off of our kill, and then we'll also clear out some of those damage, the, uh, the death wounds. Okay, we have this Winged Knight here with some flight, which will block the Dominus because of the melee. Let's see, next turn we're going to see damage to our Warlord for every one of these pentagrams, which is not good. Uh, we could probably just go and stack for damage. We'll clear this out now. So we'll, we'll use our destruction skill so that we can attack. And then we'll continue on. We will actually just summon this range here over here on D1 for damage. We'll see some damage happen, so I can see a lot of damage happening there. Okay, we got this Yoster with some flight, which is now blocking the Dominus once again. Also, when she dies, she will silence the male heroes, which in this case will be the all three, uh, the Murden Care, the Count Vlad, and then also the Dominus. I'm going to go with this immune hero over here on the uh, C3. This one will give us an attack boost, and then also, well, I guess it will summon some runes, which is not what we want. But at least we can then summon on the C3 spot with the, de the death rune. Okay, this Hanzo here has some block because of an event. And so this will actually get counterattack once that happens. We're going to go with our lifesteal skill here. So we can get some health back and then also deal some damage. Then let's see what we can do here. Just going to summon another hero over here to attack. Whoa! Got this hoodoo with a totem and that totem itself will be able to give us some health boost and then an attack boost for later. As you can see, the Hanzo has the Mental Shield because of a hero dying. Let's see, you got another Baltz here. This one also has Flight, so that'll actually get in the way of those heroes. You want to break the shield here so we can just deal some damage. I'll go with... I'm going to actually go with this Flight Hero over here on D2, just to get... just to prevent the Hanzo from attacking our Mizu. I didn't see the attack boost happening once uh, one of our heroes, uh, well, actually when uh, when we're healed. Okay. So that actually helps with our Gleedy Pet, which is healing whenever our melee heroes do kill. Uh, let's see, we'll combat over here. I'm going to just summon this hero with the low attack and get rid of one of these damage runes. Okay, the All Prince of Sands with the negative attack again. That's fine. We've cleared out those heroes. Okay, the Aphrodite here clearing out our Athena. We should have lethal now because of the multiple open lanes. There's also no death trigger on this hero. And so we'll just summon a weak hero. We'll actually do one more shuffle, see if we can get rid of some heroes, which in this case, we got this, this paladin here. We get rid of the damage room. Get the Aphrodite. And there we go. So that was Ravenna the Devious Knight. Not bad, we also got some ghosted too. Okay, 
so we are waiting for the next boss, so we will see you guys later. This is Happy Splasher, signing off.